if the service is free, we are the product. This is Front and Center with your host, Jackie Jordan. Entertainment and pop culture expert Jackie Jordan is with us. We are the show where we talk with the change agents, the storytellers, and the activators making impact from behind the scenes. Welcome to Front and Center with Jackie Jordan. I'm Jackie Jordan. Thank you so much for joining us. We are the show with the change agents, the storytellers, and the activators from behind the scenes take their seat with us now front and center. Our next guest is my college professor from the University of Delaware, Dr. Juliet D. I first studied with her as a sophomore at the University of Delaware and took her mass comm class. And for some reason, we connected and clicked and ended up being friends and virtually colleagues for the last couple of decades. And it's such a privilege to have her with us today, Dr. D. So everybody is going to be asking us like, why, why are we having this conversation? And, you know, in full disclosure and transparency, you know, we're kind of like on the opposite ends of the spectrum, at least politically as defined today. And it even, you know, one for, for many reasons, one, because TV Guestbrook Publishing published the book of Tara Reid. She was the Joe Biden accuser called Left Out when the truth doesn't fit in. And the University of Delaware was caught in the controversy because they didn't release the Senate papers that would have proved or disproved Tara Reid's claims. And, uh, you know, the Biden Institute is also at the University of Delaware. And so there's a lot of, we've got a lot of like differences, however, what I find so fascinating is regardless of the spectrum, we actually do see things so much the same way, and especially as it relates to the media and media narratives. And so I really appreciate you joining us. You were the first person who exposed me to subliminal uh, messaging in the yes. media. And that was such, such a shocker. And here we are watching these big narrative constructs. Share with me like what you're teaching the students. You've got some, really a few fascinating classes and courses that you're teaching. You're kind of delving into this whole this whole concept about media narratives. Oh, yeah. Well, this fall, I'm teaching two courses. One is a First Amendment law course. It's freedom of expression. And the other course I'm teaching is called Journalism Ethics. I realize that may sound like an oxymoron. <laughs> right. Today it does. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So uh, even if it might be an oxymoron, I'm trying to instill in our students some ideas of good ex ethical practices if they want to become journalists. <laughs> and even the questions, I think what, you know, what I, what, you know, in our discussions, you know, you're, you're basically teaching critical thinking. It's like, how to ask the question behind the question, you know, how to cross-reference information. I think because especially this, the younger generation, you can speak to it more because you spend more time with it, but they, they tend to think, take things on face value, but I think because they're so bombarded with information. Yeah, I, I agree. And what, one thing you and I have talked about before, um, this current generation of college students doesn't they don't seem to care about personal privacy in the way that our generation might have. Of course, you're a generation younger than I am, but I it worries me, you know, because I can stand in front of a class of 200 students and say, are you worried about all the information that you've given to Facebook or Instagram or TikTok? And invariably, they will say, no, it's okay. So that really worries frightens me. me. Frightens me. I remember when Homeland Security, uh, we you know we put the big uh, things up for Homeland Security. Had to take our sneakers and our belts off, and I felt that was an incredible invasion of privacy. Like I, I just you know stripping down at the airport was like it was it was an affront to my soul, and people were like, "Well, I've got nothing to hide. I've got nothing to hide." I'm like, "Yeah, no, but you have a basic right to privacy." Yes. Not as you know that the, the there's there's this misconception that you know because we don't have a secret doesn't mean it doesn't mean we have a right to privacy and I feel very much like that is such a damaging belief system that the younger generation has so just because you don't have a secret or something to hide doesn't doesn't mean you don't have a basic human right to privacy 
you know, oh. privacy. Yes. So that's what you're seeing. And with the, the data collection and the information and. Yeah. And I guess what, what worries me? Well, <laughs> you're talking I want to hear, I want to hear. Airports. <laughs> I mean, airports, we're, we're basically x-rayed or, you know, they can see yeah. us without our clothes on. So uh, I've done no news, privacy. I've done news segments about that. Right, right early on, I did many, many news segments about that. I was like, I thought that I was horrified yeah. that they were taking these x-ray shots going through the, uh, you know, and, and then searching us and patting us down. I mean, I can't tell you how much trouble I've been at in the airport over, over the heat issues. You don't want to, you don't want to travel with me. <laughs> I'm just maybe, saying. Maybe you and I should travel together. Yeah. <laughs> cause issues myself <laughs> well, I was, yeah <laughs> but but with regard to our students I guess what I I desperately want them to grasp is that if the service is free so you know they don't pay for Facebook they don't pay for Instagram they don't pay for TikTok if the service is free we are the product say that again because that needs to be repeated Okay, if the service is free, we are the product. And it's easy for you and me to see that, but our college students may not see it right away. So I that's to, a great discernment. Yeah, even before, you know, before there were any social media, before there was an internet, we can look at the AC Nielsen company because television viewers back in the day, actually still is the case, television viewers are sold in groups of a thousand. We call it CPM, cost per meal. And, you know, all of us would think of television, you know, if I ask my students, what's the product, they'll immediately say the programs we watch on television, but that it, that's wrong. <laughs> the product is us, the viewer. We, we, the viewers are kind of being sold like cattle to the advertisers so I do really want my students to understand that that is I mean that's like so they got the question wrong on the exam yes, <laughs> yeah, the program exactly. is not the product no the program is just the bait it's the carrot on the hook it's the fish at the end of the line exactly exactly the program is just to keep us sitting there until the commercials come it comes on yeah, it's and I for I always say that well, you know now we're dealing with a decade of artificial intelligence. So I was a student of yours around 1992. So it's quite a long time with a very different world <laughs> than it is today. And God bless you for teaching through it. It's amazing. But I always say that you know we're now we now we're really faced with artificial intelligence, and we are feeding the AI beast with our emojis, our reactions, our thoughts. And now it's actually the quantum computers are smarter than us. That's, that's why we think something and it shows up as a sales product, either on our Amazon or one of our social media feeds. Yes. Oh man. So I think you and I did talk about this. So I live in Delaware. We have a native tree called a pawpaw tree but I was going for a walk in the woods with my daughter. I pointed to a tree. I said, I think that's a pawpaw. And my daughter who carries her iPhone with her everywhere, like three minutes later, she's getting advertisements for pawpaws. <laughs> I was amazed. You know, we're in the woods. In the woods, right? Right. Which Can we have some know? privacy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can we have some privacy? The right to privacy. In the woods, no less, where the trees were the uh, original internet. You know, they were the original planetary internet, you know, right. sh sharing data information. And now, like, you know, we've damaged the trees, the woods. Yeah. Can exactly. we have some privacy? It's so funny because when I was um, your student, you were pregnant with the twins yeah. and now the twins are full functioning adults contributing to the world. They're geniuses. <laughs> well, I, that's very kind. <laughs> I, they're, they're good kids. And, and yes, I, I love when they come home, they're all coming home for Thanksgiving. So I'm excited. <laughs> that's so fantastic. Oh my God. I mean, what a lifetime has, has gone by. So tell me about some of the other classes that you're teaching, um, the courses that you're teaching this and what your, what your students are studying. Oh yeah. Well, Golly, I you got a justice class, right? The course right now is called Freedom of Expression. And yeah, we just finished a section on privacy, which you and I were talking about. And 
So for example, a student in my class, he's just turned in a research paper and he's talking about all the facial recognition software, but he's he made some really interesting points. He's saying that facial recognition software is less accurate when it comes to people of color. And so the police have sometimes arrested the wrong person of color because the facial recognition software doesn't get it right. So so yeah, you know, I'm I'm very happy that my students are looking at these these ethical issues and um uh, uh, <laughs> I, I pushed them pretty hard. And you also did a study with, with your students about January 6th. Yes, yes. What are we learning from that in class? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So, so, you know, to look at January 6th at the Unite the Right March in Charlottesville that was led by uh, Richard Spencer and Jason Kessler and um, white supremacists. And there were counter protesters. One of them, of course, was killed by um, James Field, a woman named Heather Heyer. Um, but a lot of a lot of the counter press protesters were actually injured. And so 10 of the counter pro protesters filed a lawsuit. The, the lawsuit is called Signs versus Kessler. It was a woman named Elizabeth Signs suing Jason Kessler. And it, of course, these, ten, these things take years. So it took about four years to get through the courts. But a year ago, a jury actually awarded $25 million to the plaintiffs, meaning the people who were injured by the white supremacists, white supremacists, neo-Nazis who were marching. And the charge was civil conspiracy. So we take that charge or that complaint, civil conspiracy, and we apply it to January 6th. And so the cases that I'm having my students look, look at right now are, um, there's a, a lawsuit by one of our US congressmen, his name is Eric Swalwell, he's from California. Um, Eric Swalwell has gotten together with some of the US Capitol Police who were injured on January 6th. And they're, they have filed a lawsuit against Donald Trump, but it's the same complaint. They're, they're, the complaint is specifying civil conspiracy. In other words, the, the idea is that Donald Trump may or may not have conspired with the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers. And to me, it's just kind of fascinating that the people who were injured on January 6th, they can't really turn to criminal law um, there is a law that it, it's against the law to incite a riot, and that is a criminal law, but no prosecutor has charged Donald Trump with inciting a riot on January 6th. But if you can't- And that would be the old law of screaming fire in a theater. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's ah, you know, you know. <laughs> I remember, I had a good professor in college. Oh, excellent. Yeah, right. You, we, you can't shut fire in a crowded theater if there's no fire, you know, and um, and that's called creating a clear and present danger. So, so yeah, the as I say, no prosecutor has tried to charge Donald Trump with inciting a riot, which would be a criminal case. But this civil case by Eric Swalwell and a number of the U.S. Capitol Police officers has not been the judge did not dismiss the case. So what that means is that it could proceed to discovery or it could proceed to trial. And I, I can't call it's still, it. Yeah, it still feels flawed, though, because you would need a, 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 a general admission from Donald Trump that there was an intent to do it. So on a just on a base level, it feels like there's, there's a it's a a nothing burrito at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, exactly. And conspiracy is so hard to prove. To prove it, right. Yeah. I mean, knows? we know we're still trying to prove, uh, you know, uh, Abe Lincoln's conspirators, you know, mm -hmm. and how many years has, has he been dead? That, you mean um, the, the, the people who conspired with John yeah, Booth? Yeah, yeah, the still. John Booth. Yes, exactly. I mean, they got hung for it, but it was still, it was still a really gray. Um, just because they knew him really didn't mean that they conspired with him. And Absolutely. so, you know, that's always been a, um, you know, a source of really 
negative contention as well that yeah. that they were murdered you know that's the my name is mud <laughs> and, you know uh, for dr mud you know treating him they you know they they accused him of doing it so the conspiracy is a very difficult thing to prove even when you're definitely like in the abe lincoln thing you want a specific outcome yes. uh, of it so that's fascinating so you're you're definitely doing some deep dives <laughs> dr d <laughs> in your in your class um what i uh, wanted to acknowledge as well is that um you have freedom in your curriculum. You're not there. Nobody, nobody at, you know, at this level of your tenure, you know, influences you or bribes you or like you, you create your, your, your curriculums for the university and the mass media. I do. It's funny. Interesting. You mentioned this um, yesterday, actually in my class, a young woman in my class gave her research presentation about the university of Idaho um, in the state of Idaho, they've passed a law saying that professors at all Idaho universities are not allowed to discuss abortion or contraceptives with their students. So I was kind of surprised by that. Um, we don't have that law in Delaware. So. Well, and you know, my, my take is like, I'm, I'm, I'm a first amendment absolutist. I, I, I always say, I want to hear what my enemies say. I want to hear what my enemies think. I want to hear the logic behind them. I don't want to be edited. I want, I want information to be completely accessible. And then I have the reasonable discernment to decide, you know, whether I want to vote with my money, vote with my morality, vote with my, you know, consciousness to, or even my attention to apply to it. But when somebody else is deciding for me, that to me is, that to me is a frightening proposition that that's just my, my, my take on it. Mm -hmm. It's really it, interesting that you say that. I love that you said, I want to vote with my money. This goes way, 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 way back, but like 1992 or so. <laughs> way back then. <laughs> <laughs> if I go back 30 years. Yeah, you were so, pregnant with twins. <laughs> I, I remember. I don't know if you remember this, but there was this brouhaha about Ice-T because he, it wasn't rap, it wasn't hip hop. He had a song that was actually in the genre of thrash metal. And the song was called Cop Killer. And uh, so Time Warner, who was distributing Ice-T's music, um, people were threatening to bomb the Time Warner building. And um, the solution that people came up with that I, I actually liked the best was there were, you know, a lot of police fraternal organizations, fraternal order of police. They decided to sell all their stock in Time Warner. And so in a sense, they were literally voting with their dollars. With money. That's, yes. That to me is how we do this. This is how we do it. Speaking of rap, I think it was around the same time. I remember you rapping or you were challenged to rap around that same time in 1992. I was. <laughs> and, you, and you took the challenge up really well. <laughs> there were a couple of guys who shot themselves in the head. Fools will rush in where the angels fear to tread. The guy who survived said the music made us do it. But the judge said in court, ain't no way that you can prove it. Dungeons and dragons may take some in the wrong direction. Is it games or is it guns to which we make our objections? The guy makes child porn, you can lock him up in jail. But the damage has been done, they'll just let it out of bail. There was a young man in the class. Maybe you remember his name was Tyron Brown. I do. Um, I'm sorry, Tyron Jones. Tyron Jones. Jones. Yes. So he wanted me to write a rap. And you did. I and did. You did. <laughs> but I told him that the rap would include all the questions on the final exam. And so that's what I did. Do you know how creative that is to have done? Like, <laughs> to whip that out? Well, amongst I, all I, your other talents <laughs> I actually needed Ty we called him Ty um we I needed him to perform it and he did and he was brilliant and I thought oh man I spent all this time writing this so I performed it <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, great. I hope it makes you laugh <laughs> that's so great well to you know to make your point before the rap that you know that's a really good example back to the rapper Ice-T Mm -hmm. that 
you know, you get to vote with your money. And I, I, I think that's how a functioning society does it. It's like dogs in a dog park. If you take the dog in a dog park that is the most rambunctious, the other dogs will corral it and basically make it behave, you know, like over a period of time, a dog will be corrected on its bad behavior by the other dogs in the dog park. Oh, that's fascinating. It's true. Mm-hmm. Having had a bad German shepherd, I know that firsthand. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's, I, I'm going to tell my girlfriend because she just got a border collie who's yeah, really yeah. badly behaved. So. Yeah, you keep taking it to the dog park. The dog, the other dogs will, 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 will shape it up. And I believe that about free speech. Like, I believe that, you yes. know, that, you know, we, we vote with our money. We vote with our, what we are, what we pay attention to, you know. Um, I always, true. you know, I, there's been obviously so much controversy about Donald Trump, but I always thought like if the media stopped paying attention to him, he wouldn't you know they like they created what they complained about in that in that regard you know we attention goes you know where attention goes flows so it grows you know so oh yeah I mean no I I don't think CNN would ever want to admit this but when Donald Trump was running for president you know back 2015 2016 CNN's ratings went way up when they were covering Donald Trump so Yes, exactly. To them, to them. So who they complained about, but they benefited from it. Like, and that's and that as consumers, we, when we're watching and listening, we have to take that into consideration in our own discernment who, you know, where does the money going here? Who's benefiting from this story? I always, you know, where does the money go? Uh, and, and, and then we've had a lot of, we just had the big defamation case with Alex Jones. Yes. So defamation has been a conversation. We had uh, defamation with Johnny Depp. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so these cases, we actually did talk about the Alex Jones case. I mean, I, I'm delighted that the the jury awarded, well, a jury in Texas and then later a jury in Connecticut awarded what would actually be a billion dollars. And I'm the- horrified by that. But <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You know, it may be a moot point because, of course, Alex Jones has declared bankruptcy. Oh, so sure, of course. it's hard, hard to say what will actually happen. And, and with regard to, oh, my gosh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, that when I was teaching the mass media law class last spring, my students didn't want to talk about anything except Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Isn't that amazing? It is. And the thing that I I really wanted to make sure my students knew, I wanted them to know that Amber Heard actually won the defamation suit in England. That was back to exactly two years ago, November 2020. So, so, you know, when it's just a judge without a jury in England, she wins, but with a jury in the state of Virginia, she loses. So Exactly. And not only was it a jury in the state of Virginia, I think Virginia had tougher defamation laws, that it wasn't a jurisdiction that either of them belonged to, and that it was a place that allowed cameras in the courtrooms, not all jurisdictions. So there was a lot of benefit to dragging that story there. Um, and I've, you know, I've talked about it on Newsmax and some of my television appearances along the way about that defamation case, because to me, it was a restoration of Johnny Depp's public persona in order to get him back at his high level paychecks yeah. that he was accustomed to receiving, like Pirates of the Caribbean and, yes. and movies like such as that. So yeah, it, it, it's fantastic those... beasts. And we're yes, them yes. In the JK Rowling series. <laughs> yes, yes. And so those those things play into uh, the, the, the like the context. It's not just the face value. It's I also look at what um, when when a story breaks, what is the next narrative? Like what is that story breaking into? You know, and when like a, when a Johnny Depp like rules the media with Amber Heard in the courtrooms, you know, what other stories are we not getting for three weeks yes. What's going on? Good point. You know? <laughs> what else is Congress up to? <laughs> what other bills, you know, what other money is being spent? You know, so, so it's not just the soap opera which we all love. Uh, and then politically, I always say we love football teams. We've been conditioned to vote for our, our colors, whether 
whether regardless of whether they win or they lose we love our colors we love football we love our colors that's the way we're trained we're yeah. loyal to it to the end the problem is it's fun in sports and entertainment not such a wise choice all the time when it's politics and policy so true <laughs> uh, i gosh jackie you know that i live so close to philly so we were really happy that the Phillies won the pennant, but we were devastated that the Astros got the World Series <laughs> and the Astros are just cheaters. So, you know, they bang on garbage cans, they steal signs. I'm not happy with the Astros, but um, last, uh, the Eagles have been undefeated until this past Sunday night. So I'm <laughs> a little sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> but and maybe that we love that about America. We, we we love that about Americans. We love our sports. We yeah. love our sports. We yeah. love our entertainment too. So we're you know when we see a, a a big high profile case like you know Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, we get into it like a soap opera. We watch it like a soap opera. You know, Absolutely. and every and everybody gets a, everybody becomes a character. Like the, the Johnny Depp's attorney, you know, is now a, like a folk hero. You know, defamation superhero woman lawsuit you know, attorney, you know, so it's, that's what we do. How we, yeah. That's how we do it. I am always just like widen the view on the picture. We also talked about um, the lockdowns with the churches and synagogues yes. fighting for their right, the first amendment right to, to gather was something else you discussed in your classrooms. Yes. Since we're looking at all kinds of first amendment issues. So if we go back to two years ago, uh, November, 2020, this is uh, about two months before the vaccine against the coronavirus was invented. And if we go back to, let's say, March 2020, when so many people were dying in New York and all over the country, governors of, I, I think really the governors of all 50 states issued executive orders to lock down churches and synagogues. And so there were many, many lawsuits against the governors especially in california well oh, I, yeah. I was yeah i saw that in california a lot of people took you know took a lot of churches went up against gavin newsom governor newsom's executive order said that people could still have worship services as long as they were outdoors because the weather in california is always gorgeous it, you always have 70 degrees and sunny <laughs> this case went all the way to the u.s supreme court and the U.S. Supreme Court actually upheld Governor Newsom's executive order and said, yeah, you can have a lockdown and you can say no more than 10 people can be in a church or a synagogue for a service. And so they upheld that in May 2020. But if we fast forward six months to November 2020, big, big change. So Ruth Bader, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away in September 2020. Amy Coney Barrett was the new justice on the U.S. Supreme Court. And this time it wasn't Gavin Newsom and it wasn't California. It was New York. Um, it was the um, Roman Catholic Diocese of Brooklyn. And they filed a lawsuit against Andrew Cuomo, who was the governor at the time. And um, once again, the case went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said, hey, free exercise of religion is a really high priority. And so they said, yes, churches and synagogues may have worship services indoors with more than 10 people. So the Supreme Court actually reversed itself wow. within six months, which is, I think, kind of fascinating. It is fascinating. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, in fact, it, 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 it's, it's, fa that is no, absolutely fascinating. It's yeah. fascinating. Like the times we're living in is fascinating. Yeah. What, like, what is your biggest concern overall media wise going forward going from forward. your, from your year years? Like what, if you were the ruler of the world and you could correct, <laughs> you could correct, well, what would your corrections be wow. at this time? Well, I'm not thrilled that TikTok is owned by a company called ByteDance, which is in China. And all the teenagers that are on TikTok probably have no, no idea. idea. I am about so the Chinese government gathering all their personal information. And of course, the 
Chinese government and bite the answer saying, oh no, we're not gather gathering we're gathering that information. We're not trying to sell or anything else or hijack your souls in the future time space that you don't even know about yet because you're too naive to realize what you're engaging in because you're just dancing on yeah. social media. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I, I, believe me, Jackie, I don't really know. Like if you want to go off the grid, you could never use a credit card. You'd have to pay for everything in cash. Um, it would be so difficult. Like I personally, there are times when I think, gee, I could go off the grid. I could pay for everything in cash. But if I want to buy a plane ticket, I have to use a credit card. So yeah, and, and you have to be part of a database and they have to be able to look you up. I, I mean, you, your world gets very small if you subscribe to this whole idea of living. I mean, ideally, yeah, ideally, I want to grow my own food. But like, I, you know, I, I couldn't be connecting to you right now if I weren't using technology. It just wouldn't even happen. Right. You know, it's, 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 we're, yeah, it's a very, we, we, it's almost like in the last decade and a half, we subscribed to so many systems and we didn't realize the price tag we were going to pay. Yeah. And I actually, I think you're making a, also a really wonderful point. Thank heaven for Zoom, because during the coronavirus lockdown, I could speak to my mom and dad who were in you know, like thousands of miles away on Zoom. Technology works when it, you know, it, the technology is, yeah, it's. There are times it's a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Yeah. But, but, but I think we're, we have, a, we don't pay enough attention to, as you said in the very beginning, that we're the product if we're not paying attention. So yes, TikTok to me has always been a bump 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 concern. I'm not on TikTok, but something about TikTok is just always, yeah, scared yeah. me. There was actually a really fascinating um, news investigation. This was actually done by the BBC about TikTok. Um, it was about children in a Syrian refugee camp. And the children are live streaming themselves. Well, you know, a camera person is live streaming these children begging for money because they don't have any food to eat. And people in England are sending money and so the BBC said, okay, let's check this out. So the BBC gave a donation of $100. And what they actually found out was TikTok kept 70 of the $100. The camera person who was live streaming the children, he kept 20 of the $100. And if the children were really lucky, they might have gotten $10. So I wish people would be careful. <laughs> <laughs> and, exactly, and exactly. I say I always say the, the problems on this plane of existence are simple. The solutions are simple, but the greed mm. causes so much unnecessary suffering. Yes. Yeah. So much unnecessary suffering. My goodness. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. D. You are so fantastic. I so appreciate you. I value what you teach, what you what you learn, and um, all of our years of friendship. So thank you so much for joining us. Likewise. <laughs> And if you like this episode of Front and Center with Jackie Jordan, please feel free to subscribe to us here on YouTube or find us on any of the places that you enjoy listening to your favorite podcast. I'm Jackie Jordan. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us on the Front and Center with Jackie Jordan podcast. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Instagram at TV Guestbert. We'd love to hear from you.